All right, thank you. All right, welcome everybody to the first meeting of the TSC in January of 2023, the January 12th meeting. Um, as you are probably all aware, uh, the meetings that we have within the Hyperledger Foundation all must abide by two things. The first is the antitrust policy notice that is currently displayed on the screen. Um, so there are potential competitors in this meeting. Uh, make sure that you're not doing anything that would uh, impact the your antitrust and competition sort of laws that exist. And the second thing that we must abide by is the code of conduct, which is linked in our agenda. Basically, all are welcome here. Um, be respectful of the other people and their ideas and opinions and their thoughts. And uh, we'll have some really good meetings this, uh, this term. So with that, I think we have the agenda, two announcements. Uh, the first announcement is a standard announcement that you will hear every week. Uh, the Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter goes out each Friday. If there is something that you would like to include in that newsletter, please leave a comment on the uh, link there for the wiki page that is in the agenda. Uh, and it will go out on Friday. And then the, the second thing that I included as an announcement is uh, just obviously this is the first meeting of our new TOC. Uh, and so I wanted to link in our TOC responsibilities so that everybody had a chance to review what our responsibilities are. Uh, in that document, there is uh, a list of obviously what's included in the charter and what it says that the TOC is responsible for. There are also some uh, specific highlights for TOC members as far as um, specific things that you must do, uh, including um, participating in these meetings and reviewing project updates and other sorts of things that uh, might be um, useful for you to review as, as you uh, become a member. Um, so I do wanna take an opportunity here to, to welcome all of the new members to the TOC um really appreciate the the fact that you ran this year and that uh you are elected so congratulations to everybody who was elected to the the toc any other announcements that anybody has or would like to make all right so I don't see any hands coming up. Um, that is probably something I should mention is just uh, we do use the raise hand feature during these meetings to make sure that people have the opportunity to speak and be heard um, and that there are no sort of people just jumping in. So uh, please do use the raise hand feature as we continue through the meeting. All right, with that, uh, we don't have any, well, I guess we do, <laughs> Arun, uh, I see your hand coming up. Right. I just wanted to tell all the new uh, welcome to um, welcome new members, and then um, I know we have certain rules on like raising hands and then talking through. But please don't be impulsed by um, like what you know and what you don't know. Feel free to uh, raise up your opinions and voices. We're happy to help you through the uh, journey through the integration. That's it. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, Marcus. Yeah, hi everyone. This is Marcus speaking. I mean, uh, I want to quickly say hello to all of you. I mean, I haven't uh, had the chance yet to speak to all of us. Um, so my proposal for this meeting would also be uh, a very brief uh, round of introduction for everyone who's here on the TOC and new to the board. Uh, sure, we could do that. I had thought about doing that and. Uh... Didn't know if people wanted to, to take the time to do that, but we can definitely do a round of introductions for um, for everybody on the call. Uh, so I guess let's, uh, since whoever is sharing scrolled down to the list, let's do this in the order in which it's listed here. So Arno, you wanna say hello and give a short introduction? Yes, hi everybody. Well, I'm one of the dinosaurs of Hyperledger. I've been involved in this since the very beginning and still around. I'm part of the Output Technology Group at IBM and uh, 
and try to help make this uh, effort successful. All right, thanks, Arno. Arun? Hey, um, good morning and good afternoon. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be again in the TUC. Um, so it, it has been quite a journey under Arno's leadership in the first year of my TUC term and then under Tracy. Uh, so you, it's exciting to see the next one year, and especially with um, different engagements that we have been planning and different kind of meetings that have been getting to involved in the last couple of weeks at least. Uh, looking forward to working with you all. All right, thanks, Arun. Bobby? Hi, everybody. Um, I am glad to be back on the uh, TOC. Um, I come from the um, education side of things, so I am focused on onboarding people, spreading um, great um, materials through the community so it's accessible to everybody, and I'm looking forward to another year of this great um, endeavor. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Bobby. Dave? Hello, uh, I guess I'm getting close to dinosaur status as well as Arno. I've been a long time maintainer of Hyperledger Fabric. And then after a couple of years of that, became kind of the release manager and point person for a lot of things on Fabric. Um, so looking forward to another year here. Marcus? Yeah, so this is Marcus again. So I'm a research staff member at IBM Research in Zurich. Um, uh, in my day-to-day -day life, I'm contributing to a couple of labs and also um, in particular the, the Fabric Token SDK, the Fabric Smart Client, but I'm also uh, running the Fabric um, Private Chain Club project, which is uh, part of Fabric apparently. Um, and yeah, I'm super glad to uh, help this year our community uh, with all my expertise, which uh, I've gathered in my time with Hyperledger. I think that's I'm in since 2018, if I'm not wrong. And yeah, so I would really uh, contribute back uh, by I mean, helping you guys um, and the community here in this committee. Thanks. Welcome, Marcus. Steven? Hello, um, Steve Curran. I'm from the digital identity side of, of Hyperledger. Um, Indy uh, started with Aries or joined Aries or helped to initiate Aries, I mean, and then uh, a non creds as well. So that's primarily focus, um, trying to help out a bit where I can in, in Ursa as well. And looking forward to learning about the other Hyperledger projects, which I've not dabbled in too much. And so looking forward to that. And glad to be here. All right, welcome, Steve. Timo? Hi, um, Timo. Uh, definitely not a dinosaur. Uh, uh, quite new, but a few years uh, within Hyperledger. Uh, and also mostly involved with the identity project. So Hyperledger Indie, Hyperledger Arise, and now uh, recently also the new Hyperledger Anuquets project. Yeah, excited to also learn about other projects because, uh, uh, yeah, as well, Stephen said, not not too familiar with the other projects. Welcome, Timo. And Rama? Hi, uh, I'm uh, Rama, uh, another one of the IBMers. Uh, I work for IBM Research India. I'm a senior researcher. Uh, I'm not a dinosaur either, but uh, I... Uh, I've been long uh, around long enough to remember when Hyperledger was called open blockchain. So I've been around. Uh, recently, in the past three or four years, I've been interested in everything to do with interoperability. Uh, uh, I'm the lead maintainer of the uh, Viva project, which has recently, as you all know, been uh, rolled into the uh, Cacti project as a merger with Cactus. So uh, I am uh, the goal of interoperability, though. Uh, we uh, envisioned it as a connection between different distributed ledgers. Uh, can also think about it as a, a way to uh, create an integrated or, or more of an integration between the different Hyperledger projects. So I've been looking at the different Hyperledger projects and I think there's a lot of scope for us to uh, get the different projects to be uh, compatible with each other. And so that uh, when somebody looks at the Hyperledger uh, project suite, they can, uh, uh, they can, uh, 
take whatever they want be it distributed ledger middleware tool and everything and uh, it's an it's a one place uh, it's a one stop shop for all for the entire blockchain solution so that's something that really uh, uh, drives me and i hope to make uh, uh, some inroads into that this year all right thanks rama and uh, I guess I should do an introduction to myself as well. So I'm Tracy Pert. I work for Accenture going on almost four years now at Accenture. And uh, I got my start in the Hyperledger space as well when uh, Hyperledger Fabric was the open blockchain platform. So back in 2015, kind of time frame is when I started my blockchain journey. I obviously spent a stint, probably a number of you know, as the Hyperledger community architect at some point in my past. And I'm currently the a Hyperledger lab student, as well as the chair of the TFC for Hyperledger. So um, welcome everybody who is new uh, to the call. Um, I do notice that I think we have a few community members on the call today, as well as staff members. Um, so I didn't know if anybody else wanted to take an opportunity to introduce themselves while we're doing introductions. Um, feel free to do that now. Victor? Sure. So I'm Victor Grudniewski. I'm helping mostly with Iroha too. I'm from Saramitsu. And generally, I'm addressing documentation and technical support side, but sometimes I'm digging in the code, and actually quite a lot. So, any questions regarding Iroha 2 uh, are something that I can help with. And also, if you have questions regarding the Orsa side, I will be attending Orsa meetings and try to help there as well. That's it. All right. Welcome, Victor. Thank Anybody you. else would like to take the opportunity to introduce themselves before we move on with the agenda? All right. Well, you are completely happy to lurk here, uh, participate. Feel free to, at any point, uh, jump in, raise your hand, and um, add your thoughts and in, in your uh, opinions to the meeting. So we're completely open to anybody who wants to, to participate. Um, all right. So then I guess for quarterly reports, uh, we do have the URSA report that is uh, still outstanding from December. I know that uh, there's been some uh, meetings that have attempted to be held in the URSA community, but it's, it's maybe not a good time for the, the people who are participating there. Um, so we, we do want to try and figure out how to get that group re kicked off here in the new year and see if we can get them to do some updates as far as what's happening there. Steve? Sure, I will try to address Ersa. I, I did a report late in 2022. Was that not the Q4 or was that the Q3? <laughs> that, that was the Q3, Stephen. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was it was interesting, right? Because when you did that, I think it was shortly before the Q4 one came up on the calendar. And so it was kind of like, do we ask for the Q4 one? Do we not ask for the Q4 one? Um, so I've, I've left it on here uh, because we, we weren't quite sure what to do with that. Um, but yeah, if you want to, um, if you and maybe Victor want to work on that together, uh, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely, yes. All right, and then we do have two reports that are due today. Um, I did see Dave, you had requested uh, the link for uh, reports to show up in the right spot. Uh, so hopefully we'll get the fabric. And I guess I need to be better about uh, changing that to cacti. Uh, that should say hyperledger cacti. Um, those reports are due uh, today. So we'll hopefully see those and get those to be reviewed for next week. The All right, and so then, I'm sorry. The name hasn't back. changed yet. The The name for Cactus hasn't uh, changed yet. We're still waiting on the code merge. Okay. All right. Yeah, Rama? Yeah. Yeah, uh, just, just wanted to uh, echo that point. So we have a, 
uh, I, I guess we were the kind of the blockers there because we were waiting for uh, some outstanding PRs to be completed. Uh, it's, it's basically done. Uh, I'm going to message Rai and get some time from him as soon as I can. Uh, try to get this done uh, sometime in the middle of next week. So, yeah. But yeah, you can, from now on, we can probably submit reports for Cacti. In fact, the uh, update that was uh, we submitted earlier today, or I think it was yesterday, that uh, contains uh, uh, updates on both Cactus and Weaver. So it was meant to be a Cacti update. Okay, great. Thanks for that, Robert. All right, so the main, the main topic for today is really to discuss goals for our 2023 POC term. So this is really an open discussion to try and figure out what people are interested in. Um, obviously, we have a set of both new members as well as uh, returning members to the, the TOC. And so I'd like to spend some time just thinking about some of the things that we would like to work on, uh, see if there's potentially any sort of task forces that we might want to kick off um, besides the continuing con continuation of the security task force as it's ongoing. Um, so those are, I think, really the sorts of conversations that I want to have and see what people are thinking. There's going to be the brave first person to raise their hand and talk about what it is they'd like to see uh, the TOC accomplish this year. Yeah, Victor. So hopefully we can uh, get Ursa going ahead uh, this year, and hopefully it's uh, in more major state when it's in Iroha because there were, as, I, uh, as far as I remember, some security issues to fix, and well, maybe some code quality uh, stuff uh, too, because it kind of stopped at some point. Well. On several occasions, uh, I guess that's it for me. But I feel like it's quite important. All right. Thanks, Victor. Rama. Yeah. So, uh, just following on what I said earlier, uh, I uh, I do want to try and get uh, like talk to the different uh, different project maintainers uh, to figure out how they can be compatible with each other that's that is uh, you know different projects have their own niches now they can uh, depend on uh, a different project for to solve a particular purpose for example firefly as a uh, middleware for a multi blockchain uh, application can depend on something like cacti for uh, underlying interoperability protocols uh, we can uh, have uh, uh, cacti depending on ursa for uh, all of its security mechanism needs and so on. So what I think I see, and I don't know how closely the different project maintainers are working together or are even aware of what the other projects are doing, but there may be a lot of uh, reinventing of these going on across the different projects. So I want to make sure that uh, we try to uh, eliminate redundancy as much as possible and try to have particular projects be the repositories that other projects can depend on, uh, like Ursa for as the canonical repository for security mechanisms. So this is sort of, uh, I have some inquiry thoughts on this. Uh, hopefully I'll flesh these out as the year goes by. Thank you, Rama. Arno? Yes, uh, so, I mean, to the risk of sounding like a broken record to the, to, to the past members of the TOC, I mean, uh, but also in keeping with what Victor touched on, uh, you know, and for those who don't know, I, you know, I spend most of my time now focusing on um, OpenSSF, which is a sister project to Hyperledger within the Linux Foundation, and uh, which, you know, uh, focuses on uh, securing the open source software supply chain. And so uh, we started looking into this last year. We didn't really get to what I was hoping for, uh, which is and I hope we can do that this year, is for the TOC to really shepherd, you know, establishing policies with regard to how we deal with the security of open, of the, the software we're developing 
in the hyperledger across the different projects. I think we do need to improve the security posture, as we call it now. And um, I'm very hoping that we can succeed in this this year. Yeah, thanks for that, Arno. I think that's a, a really important topic for us to, to talk through this year. Uh, I do know that in the governing board meeting that we had in December, that was a topic that came up as well, uh, is, is making sure that we're putting together the, the best practices for security across our projects. And so I think it's definitely going to be a topic of conversation that we need to continue and to, to really focus on that task force that exists to, to really come out with what are these best practices and how can we consistently apply those practices across uh, the different Hyperledger projects. So um, thank you for bringing that one up as a topic because it is it is top of mind, I think, for a lot of people. Arun? Right. Um, so one of the things that has top priority for me this year is in terms of in, like speeding up the adoption or improving the adoption. So especially some of the challenges that we have face, we have been facing is in terms of lack of tooling support itself. Again, when it comes to uh, the speed of adoption. So when we talk about blockchain related or blockchain multi-party system applications, the value add is understood. Uh, it's no more question of people asking, is this a uh, value add for our use case or is this going to solve our business problem statements? The question rather now nowadays that we are facing is, okay, let's say we adopt this. So what's the benefit? Like we would be the only person um, adopting it, right? So the the uh, faster adoption would require us to develop additional tooling around it. So which means we need to foster projects that would uh, bring in additional capability. Um, for instance, it could be as uh, it it could vary, right? For instance, it could be even the simple validation or verification frameworks, the formal validation of smart contracts, there is no standard way of how do we do that. Or it could be in a way of uh, having unified tools for deployment, or it could be in a way of um, having the uh, 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 interop support, uh, which the CACTI, if, uh, CACTI team is putting into, and then having frameworks like Payroom being brought into mainstream Hyperledger as a mainstream Hyperledger project. So um, yeah, my priorities for the year would follow this norm and see what we can do through the year uh, from our side. All right, thank you, Ruth. Stephen? Yeah, I think um, I'm gonna play off a little of what was said earlier. Um, uh, reference Ursa and um, things we found with Indy, which is um, really trying to come up with a um, best practices and guidance and help, whatever we can do for projects to be able to have automated pipelines that produce artifacts um, that that make it dead simple for somebody to make a contribution and actually have it come out the other end. Um, Indy just went through a really long and painful exercise to update its pipeline so that when you make a code change it actually can be produce can produce an output versa doesn't have that i asked that the other day or recently somebody put in just like a dependency update we need to update this dependency to this and the act of actually producing an artifact from that is painful and so um it's it is a difficult thing but i'm hoping that across the projects we can come up with good practices and um uh, borrow learnings and so on to make it easier to um uh, to have each project able to produce those in a in a in a fully automated way it's a lot of work i know that um so it's not easy but but i certainly encourage it we're getting better at uh the various projects i'm involved with but it's hard All right, thank you. Marcus? Yeah, so I, I wanted to add something to uh, what Anot suggested regarding um, the security back practicing and collecting those in order also to share it with different communities under the 
uh, Linux Foundation. But I was also thinking that not only the security best practicing, but also our processes we have established within Hyperledger and other vehicles like the concept of the labs, uh, which does not exist for uh, many other open source communities. This is something really val valuable, I, I believe, uh, was developed here, or maybe not even developed, but definitely we have that here in place and it could be could be shared with other projects as well. But on the other hand, I, I also believe that there are other concepts used um, um, in, in different projects, uh, which we should maybe also try to adopt. Um, and I think, I mean, I, I believe the role of the TOC is here then, I mean, to basically uh, see what are the needs and understand what are the needs of our community uh, and what are maybe, what processes are maybe broken, what what do uh, what does not work so well uh, for us? Are there any other concepts which we can basically borrow from? Um, that, that's uh, what I wanted to add to Arno's suggestion. And so what I also believe should be um, a goal of the TOC this year is to, I mean, try to help the community to streamline um, um, the ease of use of our different projects. Um, because I'm, I'm saying that because I remember from the last Hyperledger Global Forum, many people were, I mean, users of, uh, of our projects were saying, oh, they are so difficult to use. I mean, uh, then they explained how uh, difficult it is to set up a test network for uh, Hyperledger Fabric, for instance, right? And then there were some talks and they said, well, I mean, it's super easy to set it up. Just, just do this and this and this, and then you're done. But if you uh, look more closely, then uh, maybe you notice that sometimes it works so nicely and easy because they're sacrificing security to some extent. Um, and I think there the TOC should should try to, I mean, to to, to help. I mean that uh, we are we are not losing the nice security benefits we get through distributed ledger technologies um, um, by just um, making it easier to use. Because I guess I mean it must be uh, not so easy to set up a distributed system, right? That's I wanted to, to, to bring here on the table. All right, thanks, Marcus. Roma? Uh, yeah, thanks. I, uh, I just uh, I wanted to ask a question. Uh, have past uh, TOCs or TSCs considered uh, providing a, some kind of a permanent testbed for people to spin up different uh, uh, networks and, and uh, apply different tools? Like, drawn from the hyperledger projects like uh this relates to what i think marcus was saying is uh, people find it hard to like set up a uh, network sometimes yeah i think there has been discussions of uh test beds and uh test infrastructure i i think it boils down to cost and how do we cover those costs um it is what it really comes down to so um i think that's been the the biggest challenge and anybody who has uh, knowledge otherwise or, or knowledge specifically, you know, who'd like to add to that, please do. Thanks. Sure. That's something that we've uh, talked about basically since day zero, um, setting up test nets. And it does come down to cost um, and expectation of support. Uh, one of the big things that we ran into uh following the workshop that we did last year was there was a test network that was set up for the workshop and we continued to get questions about where did the stuff that i did during the workshop go and we you know the the people who ran that test net only ran it for like three days um so there's some expectation setting that would need to happen with the community about the test net is a test net and it will go away um so it, it it's a little more complex than just spin some stuff up and let people test. Yeah, I see that. Thanks. All right, uh, Timo. Um, yeah, I, I actually had a small comment about like uh, Stephen's uh, uh, thing on um, like pipelines and making sure um, 
um, we have releasable artifacts is that um, like, for example, for the Ursa library, uh, uh, it's by coincidence that a colleague of mine made a pull request for that uh, a few months ago, um, but it hasn't been looked at much. And I think that's maybe also a problem, I think, especially then, for example, with the Ursa project that isn't very actively maintained, is that um, there's maybe not always ownership then over who, uh, yeah, reviews those pull requests. All right, thanks, Timo. Dave? Uh, yeah, my kind of follows on some of the other ones um, around good practices. We heard about like security of breast practices and, and CI pipeline uh, good practices. But I think it would be nice to pull all that together into an overall project good practices or best practices. Um, we have like the checklist that we did last year, which is, I think, a good start. But I think we can go further than that and say, these are the different things you need to think about for a project um, and maybe they link to a deep dive like a deep link to a, a deep dive on security good practices and CI good practices. But overall, I think there's a lot of considerations for managing a project that people need to consider and if you're bringing a new project in or, or you're a new maintainer, you probably don't know a lot about a lot of those things so you know even like there's a lot of github settings it's hard to know which ones are recommended. Uh, we've had conversation in the past week about Zen Hub versus GitHub projects for managing uh, backlogs of issues and things like that. So there's just a whole host of things. I think it'd be good to have a, a one-stop shop uh, kind of umbrella location that we can then link off to for these different aspects. Thanks, Dave. All right, so I'm not seeing any hands at the moment, so I'm just going to kind of go through the list uh, that I've heard so far to see if it uh, sparks any other ideas. Uh, really, I think project health came up a couple of times related to URSA and how do we improve the project health, the compatibility across projects and eliminating redundancy um, is, a, is another item. Security came up multiple times. Uh, increasing adoption via maybe tooling and validation. Best practices uh, came up in different uh, contexts. We just heard from, from Dave about, you know, maybe it's project best practices and that include best practices for security, for automated pipelines, for uh, project management, for how we configure GitHub, um, that sort of thing. Uh, I heard that there's some processes that we might want to either bring to other communities or uh, bring other communities processes into Hyperledger, um, really understanding what other projects do and what we might want to adopt from there. There is the uh, streamlining, the, uh, the ease of use, right? Um, so I think that goes hand in hand with some of the adoption piece, but really streamlining it and uh, making sure that it's easy to start up maybe a, a different blockchain network and um, still ensure that we're taking uh, into account things like security and, and how would we run this in uh, a healthy way. So I think those are the, the topics that I captured. I think there's another one which a lot of the returning TOC members are going to hate me for bringing up, but it is something that uh, the governing board had a discussion about which is really related to the status or the health of projects and how do we ensure that projects are remaining healthy either through some sort of badging process or through some sort of listing of what it requires for projects that have graduated. Um, you know, right now our project life cycle is a forward only life cycle and, and there's been discussions about whether that life cycle process needs to change or needs to be enhanced in any way, shape, or form. I think we've had this discussion at least once uh, for the past three years, um, if not longer. Uh, but I do think it is something that we do need to see if we can come to some sort of resolution about how do we how do we go about handling that. Um, so that's what I've captured so far. Uh, there are a few TOC members that we haven't heard from yet. I would love to to hear from those TOC members who haven't had a chance to speak yet um, and anybody else who um, that list kind of jogs some other things in their mind about what it is that they'd like to see us accomplish in 2023.
Jim. Yeah, thanks, Tracy. Um, sorry for being late. Um, I guess just a general uh, thought around um, enabling the uh, high pleasure based project um, on public chains. Um, I guess depending on the, the specific project, some are naturally uh, have a need to support that uh, versus others, you know, especially the, the DLT projects that you know, don't necessarily have that goal. But um, a lot of projects are by design cross-chain, cactus, uh, bevel, uh, firefly, um, I just feel like uh, also Aries um, or the other uh, Enocrats, um, the other uh, DID uh, related projects. Um, so many of our customers um, are looking at stacks that enable them to, uh, to do solutions within a permission setting in consortiums but they also want to uh, enable and engage a wider set of participants and you know, public chains become a natural place to do that. And th there's more than one occasion where the hyperledger stack would have been the perfect uh, choice, except for that you can't use it on public chains um, and they would have to you know, go with a lesser, uh, less uh, mature stack as a result. Um, so I, I don't know what, what are the specific concrete things we could do to encourage that, but I would say, you know, from our messaging, from our uh, marketing uh, uh, fronts, we can, we, can, we can do more to encourage this. All right. Thanks, Jim. Bobby? Hi, uh, yeah, uh, I was in a meeting um, with the Learning Materials Working Group, which now has new leadership with David um, Boswell, and we were discussing how the new reorganization of that will help the community. And one of the things we were discussing is kind of the documentation standards and the standards for people coming into the community. How do they find the resources? So that's something that definitely um, I'll be working with the Learning Materials Working Group moving forward with David to try to figure out how to support the community once they get into the community, the resources with the resources we have available. All right, great. Thanks, Bobby. Any other thoughts that people have, specific goals that they have for the 2023 TOC term? Victor? Yes, uh, I'd like to know if the time was slightly shifted because I was surprised. I haven't seen uh, previous meetings for a couple of times and uh, was it shifted for an hour after or something like that? And is the time in calendar will the right time currently? Yeah, Victor, so we, we haven't met for probably three maybe potentially four weeks um okay. just holidays uh the holiday schedules for most people were a little i think shifted some took Understood. earlier holidays some took later holidays and so we wanted to make sure that we didn't um mess with anybody's time off and, and make sure that there there wasn't any sort of um, issues there and i think we actually canceled the one right before the holidays as well because we didn't have any specific topics to, to discuss during that one so um, it, yeah, it has probably been a month since the, the TOC has met, and so no time changes, just uh, related to the holidays. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, other, other thoughts on, on goals for the 2023 term? I think we have a, a really good list. I do think that there is the potential to kick off some task forces from these from this list. So what my plan is, is to basically take the chicken scratch that I um, had here and, and put them into the, the agenda, the meeting notes so that everybody can see kind of what they are. Um, and maybe think about, you know, some potential task forces that we could kick off for the, the 2023 term that we can make sure that we're continuing to have discussions. 
uh, really sounds like there's some some things around different sorts of best practices that we might want to, to put together task forces around. Um, you know, maybe some thoughts around the, the different sort of ways in which we might ease the uh, adoption of the different projects that we have. There could be something around that. But uh, yeah, happy to have any other thoughts um, that people might have to include in that list. I think we did have everybody from the, the TOC who had an opportunity to, to speak. So that's really good. Thank you for the participation now. Um, okay, so I think with that, um, just I wanna cover what else is left on this page just so we can um, have a, make sure that everybody is aware of what's happening here. Uh, so the HLF operator uh, project proposal has come in there has been some discussions that have been ongoing with the, the Bevel community about potentially bringing the HLF operator into Bevel as a fabric operator. Um, the, those conversations are continuing, so we're leaving the pro project proposal open until there's been some sort of formal resolution on that. Um, but that's the expectation at this point is that that project is going to or that proposal is really going to become part of Bevel. Uh, so we'll we'll continue to keep an eye on that and see how those conversations progress to, to make sure that we don't have to do anything specific there. Uh, Jim? Yeah, just a quick comment on this. Uh, yeah, definitely Bevel. Uh, but I thought there's also another labs uh, contributed by IBM on the same, basically the same um, functionality, right? A, Operator for uh, for fabric. You mean the fabric smart plan? Yeah, I assume that that uh, team is also involved uh, in the discussions. Yeah, Jim is right. There's also a fabric dash operator lab that's out there. So those that and the HLF operator are kind of um, meeting similar objectives. Yeah, I think I think that um, there's potentially even a third or fourth sort of operator out there related to fabric um, that I think it, it would be really good to have these communities come together under kind of a single group, right? To, to really make sure that the operator is going to meet uh, whatever the needs are for the different uses of the operator. Um, and I would really like to see those conversations happen within the Bevel community and making sure that the the right things are done moving forward. Um, so that's, I think, you know, definitely a, a known sort of space that there's a lot of interest in, right? And really deploying fabric is, is big. Um, and I think there's a lot of different ways in which people have approached this. And so I do think Bevel is, is the right community uh, to, to make that happen and to, to make sure that all the voices are heard. So uh, would definitely, encourage anybody who uh, either is on this call or knows the right people to, to get involved in those conversations, to, to reach out to the Bevel community to make sure that those um, those conversations are, are had. Right. So, Tracy, would you expect Bevel to do some kind of assessment across these various operators and choosing which ones to more closely partner with? Yeah, there has definitely been a conversation about that, Dave. Um, about making sure that there's, you know, understanding of what's out there um, and, and really looking at the, the space as a whole. Um, so I, you know, would definitely encourage, right, Dave, if you're the right person or, or you know the right people um, to, to maybe have a conversation with the Bevel maintainers to make sure that, you know, the, the needs and, and desires of that fabric operator lab and anybody else who has an operator that they, they think is, uh, you know, the, the right one to bring into this, to, to have those conversations and make sure that, you know, all of the different, I think requirements, right, are met by whatever it is that they, the Bevel operators bring in. Because the other piece of this, right, is that um, with Bevel, I think the, the idea is that, as you are probably all aware, right, it deploys multiple blockchain frameworks. And so 
um, want to make sure that as we think about operators, we're thinking about them, uh, one for the individual blockchain platforms, but also across the board, what should an operator look like for the different sorts of blockchain frameworks. So, um, you know, that's, I, I do, you know, I had a conversation this morning with Sonak, who's one of the Bevel maintainers, and he did uh, talk about, right, like what is the right thing for us to be doing and how do we lay out kind of the design pattern for what these operators are. Um, so yeah, definitely that's the right space, I think, to be having the conversations. And um, Dave, please, uh, if you if you are that person, let's get you connected with Sonak. If there's somebody else we should connect who's related to the Fabric operator, let us know and we can make sure that those conversations are being had. Okay, thanks. Yeah. And I know Arun, you had your hand up. You're you're definitely been involved in those conversations as well. So um as a uh, you covered, so yeah, I wanted to just you, you covered all the points that I wanted to say. Um yeah, Bevel as such, um, as you know, has been um um looking into the next phase of the the release, like now that it is mature. Um uh, being um I think Sonak would be a better person, but I'll try to summarize. I think as Tracy said, the future version of Bevel, uh, we are planning to have uh, flexibility in how people choose to deploy some of these components. So there's right now there is support for Helm operator. In future, there's going to be project specific operators such as uh, Fabric operator or the HLF operator. If we can unify that and then um, consider one of those operator as uh, the project specific operator, it would also be placed alongside. So the, the choice of deployment tool uh, from an from the user perspective, they would be able to choose either they need uh, this project operator or they want to go with an Helm operator concept itself. Um, so that is definitely a good place to be in, uh, but I still feel like there is possibility for us to collaborate across uh, considering maintainers from Celo, Fabric operator and HLF operator, and then bringing them along with Bevel operate and sorry, Bevel project maintainers on all on one call and discussing it further. All right. Uh, so then the other items that we have are backlog items. Uh, so these come directly from our GitHub issues tracking. Uh, we have the update, the security process. We did kick off the security task force for that. Um, so we're continuing to leave this open until the security task force comes back with, um, you know, the best practices that we need to make sure that we're consistently implementing across the different Hyperledger projects. Uh, so that is an ongoing item. Uh, this other one that's on here, uh, which has just been open two days ago by Rai, is to uh, request to move project reports to GitHub. Um, there's some discussion that's been happening on the, the issue itself, but I think that is definitely a topic that we should discuss as the TOC. Um, so, Rai, I don't know if you want to give like an overview of what you're thinking here uh, and then let people comment on the issue uh, sure. throughout the week, and then we can talk about this further maybe next week. Sure. Um, what I would like to do, um, if you can open that. So what I would like to do is currently the quarterly reports are in the wiki um, and there are some good things and uh, there are some downsides with that. The reason that I would like to do that is uh, if you scroll down a little bit um, is it's much easier to get a, uh, a history of the voting and the comments in a, you know, uh, recorded form. Uh, you know, currently in the wiki, it's uh, it's in the wiki, but it's a little bit difficult to get to um, to find out uh, who did what and who said what. Uh, and my idea here is that uh, the, the 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 votes. I'm sorry, not the votes. Uh, as people read it, as TOC members read it, they would mark it uh, as approved, and then. Once there's some number of people who have uh, approved it, it would be it would be merged, and the conversation would be captured in the Git history over here. 
um, you know, part of this is uh, my there. I don't know when there's going to be a change to how Confluence. There is a change that how Confluence is licensed. Period. Atlassian has changed that. I don't know what the Linux Foundation uh, plan is around that. How we're going to handle that turbulence coming in the future. Um, and I don't want to deal with it again. Um, there are some, uh, it's really kind of terrible how the GitHub macros work in Confluence. And every once in a while it breaks. And then I have to go on a journey of discovery to find out what exactly broke. So my assumption is that GitHub macros and the like that are on a GitHub project would have less chance of breaking. And I would like to remove that journey of discovery for myself. Um, and then we would end up, uh, as uh, Arun pointed out, if you can click on the link for the governance rendered site, um, the we would end up over here with a, a tab that would uh, have the, like the non-creds uh, technical charter, uh, we would end up with a, a tab under there that would have the project reports going back in history. And if you look, if you switch over to the uh, TOC, if you go to like toc.hyperledger.org, um, so if you go to, uh, you know, any any of these, like the uh, the members, the TOC members, uh, this is a page that shows, you know, the history. We would have something like this. That would have like here are the you know Q1 2023 reports or whatever, and it would show the history of what they are, and it would be easier to find. I believe it would have higher uh, Google rank. I see Stephen has his hand up. Yeah, what, uh, one thing uh, sort of independent of what your proposal is, but but along the same veins of things we could um, as a as a TOC sort of have a goal of is um, generated generated sites off of Markdown. Um, I see the benefit of what you're proposing is this becomes an actual website as opposed to part of Confluence. And, and so give us the ability to um, present the data in better ways. Um, I wanna spin off of, of this, this particular use case to encourage the, um, the TOC to figure out how we can help um, projects move past readme.md files that are sitting in a GitHub repo versus a generated static website or static generated website that, that is a much friendlier, um, more welcoming and easier to understand version of the same information. So I think this is a general, uh, a general issue, which is how do we take the information and make it more accessible to, you know, new people, to contributors, to maintainers, to the particular audience for the particular thing you're talking about. So in, in what Rai is talking about, you can find a way to find all of the projects and drill down to find the quarterly reports, or you could take an individual project, sorry, you can take the TOC view, which is I want to see all the quarterly reports for all the projects and present a view that way, but also present a view that is here's the, you know, Hyperledger Aries project and here is the history of the of the report. So you have much more control over how the information gets displayed. Uh, I think it's a good practice in general, um, but it's hard to do, or at least it's not easy to do. And, and I think all the teams are going through figuring out how to do it and what's the best practices and so on. So I think the TOC could help there. Agreed. Um, we have a markdown uh, material docs that we pay for that's uh, excellent that I would like to get more projects using. Um, currently, Bayes is really the only one using. I would also like to get all the projects off of read the docs and start using GitHub pages to publish their documentation. And much like this, toc.hyperledger.org, um, you know, that's that uh, GitHub page. Um, I would like to get, uh, you know, everybody off of these bespoke platforms into one place. Um, and that one place is, is, is GitHub right now. 
So that's a longer term goal, but I'm glad that you brought it up because it would be much easier uh, if everybody was on GitHub. Stephen? Yeah, so an example of that, just so you know, is we just went through a assessment of should we use um, make docs material or should we use docusaurus which one um, you know and, and and it would be really nice not to have every project have to evaluate that figure out how to do it figure out how it applies to them but actually have a way to to just say oh you do this this and this and now you have generated docs and now it's much more about the content and less about how you present it agreed yeah, or no? yeah, and just uh, maybe. Sorry, Tracy. For a moment, that's okay. Piling on there for a moment, I do know that some of the the work that Bobby and the Documentation Task Force was doing last year related to some of this. Um, but I, I would. Uh, it sounds like maybe there's some continuation of that happening this year. But uh, Arno, I think you're going to have the last word. Yeah, and I'll be quick. I, I just wanted to follow up because as people may see on the screen, I had actually asked Rai to explain a little bit more, give a bit more ba background. And I think this discussion highlights the fact that I think, you know, the proposal, I, I, as I said in my comment, I'm not against it. I think it lacked a little bit of, you know, details as to what it would actually mean, what how we would use this. So. Uh, you know, I think this needs to be laid out properly so that we can have a formal proposal put before the talk. But Agreed. thank you. All right. Thanks, Arno. Um, so yeah, let's let's continue the conversation on that GitHub issue, uh, and we will bring it up again next week if we have something that's more formal that we can propose to to vote on. Um, but yeah, thanks everybody for your contributions today and, and we will talk again next week.